All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, reading AKGs and uh, just first off some general principles. Um, so the paper that you get is broken up into several squares. So let's say this is going to be really zoomed in from what it is normally. So let's say we got a couple squares. So those are big squares and within those big squares there are a bunch of smaller squares. Okay, so each one of these big squares here represents 0 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. And so if you add up five of these, you get one second worth of time. And each one of these smaller squares within it is exactly 0.04 seconds. So um, one, one big square is good to know because that is uh, the largest that a PR interval should ever be. Um, that's just a handy marker. Now some different ways you can tell uh, rhythm is if you um, remember these values in order, you'd be able to tell pretty much any rhythm just by glancing. And I'll show you how in a second. And then we'll just go down one more than I usually go. So each one of these represents one box. So if you've got a tracing and you've got your P and then your Q, R, S, and T wave going along and that goes happily along and then your next one happens. So the interval from each Q, R, S to Q, R, S is going to be measured in these large boxes here. So if we have just one large box in between them, and the this is all this is all depending on the rate being regular. So you know the, the, this interval doesn't change a whole lot. If it changes a whole lot, then you're going to have to average it. But if not, if it's pretty steady, then you can just go ahead and say if this is just one box in difference from you know any one of these points r to r q to q s to s just pick one and go with it the easiest one is usually just go with the r then you've got a uh, rate of 300 beats per minute if it's two boxes apart it's 150 now if it's somewhere in between there you can kind of break up into these fine gradations here however uh, you want there there's plenty of books that will tell you how to do that but in general, if you just eyeball it, you know, if it's 300, that, that person's in some serious need of some help. If it's 150, that's still pretty high. Three boxes is 100. Four is 75. Five is 60. Six is 50. And seven is 43. Now, by the time you get down to 43, this gets a little less accurate. Um, another trick you can do is you can take six seconds of time and count up how many beats you have in that six seconds. So let's say uh, we have um, six beats in those six seconds. And then multiply that by ten. So you're not really dividing, this is just six per six seconds. You do six times ten, if you have six beats in six seconds, that's 60 BPM. If you have 7.5, if you want to get fancy, in six seconds, that's 75 beats per minute. And usually the, the quickest way to do this is sometimes at the top of some of these uh, EKG papers there's little ticks. And that'll be at the very top. And each one of those ticks, three seconds. So you just add up two of those, count up how many of these R peaks are within those three seconds, within these this area and then multiply by 10 and that'll give you your rate. Okay. 
So now we're going to talk a little bit about the EKG leads, and I've already kind of drawn this up a bit just to uh, have a starting point so we don't have to draw so much. So this is a cross-section of a heart. This would be your right ventricle. This is your left ventricle. Here's your SA node. And this is just for future reference because I'm going to use this chart a fair amount. Uh, oh, sorry, this is an AV node. That's your AV node. Bundle of Hiss and Purkinje system here. So the way leads are typically done is if you have a person, let's draw a person real quick. Now, uh, the first leads that were developed were the bipolar leads. Very simple, just three leads placed, one on the left arm, one on the right arm, and one on the left leg. If you kind of see that forms kind of a triangle, this triad, I've represented that triad up here. Now, um, when you're hooking up an EKG, you got to realize that this is just a glorified uh, voltometer. Basically, it just measures the potential difference um, at the surface of the skin of what's going on deeper inside your body. So, for instance, in the heart. Um, since your heart's one of the more electrically active things in your body, it's going to be the thing that, that shows up most pro uh, predominantly. Now, um, each one of these uh, is uh, two points of a line. So imagine it that way. So I've got a line going here. A line going here, and we've got a line going here. Now, really, in reality, the electricity travels all the way over here and travels through the body like that. But for just conceptual sake, we'll use this triangle. So, um, when you're looking at an EKG, you'll notice that bumps go up and bumps go down. Bumps that are going up are positive, bumps that are going up are negative, and your baseline is isoelectric. That means that there's no electrical activity really going on one way or the other. And uh, the way an EKG works is you view from a certain perspective which way a voltage is going. It, it does have a directional kind of parameter. So lead one right here travels always from right to left. So the right side of your body or whoever you've got this hooked up to, to the left side of your body. And anything traveling in that direction is positive. Anything traveling in the backwards direction is negative. So if you take a look at your heart here, if you have some, um, say you have a wave of depolarization starting here in the sinoatrial node, it's going to travel generally kind of down, kind of mostly over. You've got a lot going over from the right to the left ventricle or atrium here. And uh, what you see when you see on lead one, let's pretend this is lead one for right now is an uptick right here. This this is the P wave. And um, what you're seeing really is electrical activity in aggregate going this way. Um, now uh, that's just for lead one. Lead two goes from the right side of the body towards the foot. So anything traveling in that direction is going to be a positive um, a uh, positive bump on the graph basically. Lead 3 goes from the left side down to the foot. So let's pretend we're looking at lead 2 now. And we're looking at the QRS. And we'll go over this in a little bit more detail later. I'll tell you what all these are. You should probably already know since this is just a review. But sometimes you'll have um, this big upward tick is if we're looking at lead 2. Lead 2 kind of travels in this direction. And if you look, that's kind of the way our electrical activity travels. It comes out of the AV node, down the bundle of Hiss, and into the Purkinje system, and it's kind of going in a downward direction until it reaches the apex of the heart. So you see this going up because that's headed in our positive direction for lead two. And a very similar story with lead three, even though the axis is a little bit different. Um, but you, you can pick up the subtle differences later. Basically, all you need to know is this QRS is the depolarization of the ventricles, which is why it comes later. And P wave is atrial, Q wave, QRS uh, is vent ventricular. 
So the augmented leads right here are a little different. Um, what they are is, I believe it's done all on computer now. It's not done uh, mechanically anymore. But it's an average. Um, what they did was use these using these same leads, they calculate where the center is. And basically that's in the general vicinity of your heart. So let's say the center is right there. If we took a point here, point here, and a point over here, where all those intersect is roughly around where your heart is. And so that serves as the negative center for all three of these leads. And it's um, basically an average going this way. So if you did this and you average these two leads, I'm not quite sure how the math actually works, but your positive direction is over to, for AVR would be towards your right arm. Positive direction for AVL would be over to your left arm. And the positive direction for AVF would be towards your feet. And uh, if you look at an EKG, which um, I guess we'll be doing a little bit later, uh, this makes sense. And so both of these guys right here are what's called frontal plane, meaning that um, the way they're arranged all kind of lies in one plane. So if you took your body and uh, let's let's pretend you lay your body down like this, you get your hand, and your chest, and then here's your waist and your feet. They'd all be in this plane right here. So they really only tell you what's going on in that plane. Now the precordial leads tell you what's going on in this plane. So let's take this human being, I'll draw a stick figure this time, and pretend we're looking at them from above. And let's just slice them right there, right through the heart. Now what you're going to see, let's pretend this is our slice of body right here. And this is the chest. What you're going to see is there's another calculated center right here, because you can't put it, I mean you can, but for a non-invasive procedure you don't put a lead in the middle of the body. Um, it's calculated based on where all these precordial leads go. If you remember correctly, they get, kind of start here on the right side of the sternum and, and wrap around over to the axillary area on the left. So V1 and V2, and I should say all the positive areas, are out here. So anything headed out in this direction is positive on a precordial lead, and anything headed towards the center, or in this case, that way, is negative. So V1 and V2 overlie the right ventricle, um, V1 being kind of on the right side of the um, sternum and V2 being kind of over the sternum to the left of the sternum maybe sometimes depending on placement. And V2, V3, V4 can kind of be considered septal. Um, I read that it's V3, V4 but uh, you know, they're all kind of in that general area. And V5 and V6 are definitely overlying the left ventricle and kind of um, any activity going this way right here through the heart would be best seen on V5 and V6. So all together that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 leads and that gives you your um, 12 lead ECG. Um, the lateral leads being 1 going this way, AVL kind of going this way, and then to a certain extent V6. And inferior leads uh, if you ever hear that term, are the ones pointing downward. So anything going downward is positive in 3, AVF, and 2.